Hello guys, this is Maciek from DCX and today I would like to present to you Universal Immersion Cooling Enclosure dedicated for crypto mining uh, operations. Uh, what we aim to deliver is the complete system which you can easily install and, uh, and uh, start your operation without uh, hesitation and long, uh, long installations. The system works with the, uh, in the um, uh, single loop uh, topology. It means that you have only one connection between the dry cooler and the enclosure. And uh, what's, what it gives you is that you don't have to connect it to, to anything. You don't need to connect it to tap water. You don't need to waste the water. You just uh, start the operation, connect the tubing, find the good place for, for both components of that system and then you can just easily uh, and then you can just easily uh, s uh, fill it with the engineered coolant and uh, start the operation uh, so let's go quickly through the components of that of that solution right that's the enclosure this enclosure is a aim, is aimed to to be able to to house at least 18 of standard s9 type single stack uh, miners uh, or different other, uh, other minor, minor, minor topologies. Ideal, ideally, we would like to, to have the miners without housing, without the fans, and, uh, and if, you, if you will be able to use different miners in the future, you will be able to host more uh, capacity inside of the single enclosure. The enclosure is equipped with, the, with some internal components, which we will uh, go, go through later. And the second main component is the dry cooler. Dry cooler or free cooler is the device which uh, allows you to uh, disperse the heat to the to the air. We aimed the we sized that the dry cooler to be able to work with the external temperatures over 55 degrees and still be able to get uh, get out from the enclosure 25 pick up 25 uh, kilowatts of heat. So it's it's a lot and. Uh, that everything works on the, uh, as I said, on the single loop, single connection using using only one type of coolant, uh, thermal uh, thermal transfer, heat transfer fluid. And what you need to that uh, besides those those components is the tubing. So we use the special tubing, which we, which can withstand withstand up to 100 degrees Celsius temperature. And the tubing length is 10 uh, meters. So basically, what you can do is you can install those two components with the uh, Within the density with, uh, of, of the 10 meters, the the idea is that that you will install that uh, the uh, the enclosure in your home or in your office in your garage, the place when you, when you would like to 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 mine a secure uh, secure miners, but the dry cooler with the, with the pumping system should be installed outside. Uh, over the, over the wall, on the opposite side of the wall, nearby your house, nearby your office. So uh, any noise which it, which it will generate will be installed, which will be, will be installed, uh, will be uh, will be set uh, outside. The uh, the idea is that 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 drug cooler should should basically um, work uh, under some kind of the sun, some sun, sun, sun shade. The components are IP58, IP, uh, IP68 uh, uh, resilient, so it can withstand the winter, it can withstand water, it can, it can withstand snow, but it's better that the elements will not directly operate on that, on that component. Other, uh, uh, what you need to um, also to assess when you are uh, planning your installation is that you should secure secure that the components from the access from the miners from the child uh, dogs or, or uh, any other animals because we have two fans here and one pumping system it should be not easily available for the uh, to the uh, to, to the miners so um, you can also um, you can also find some place when you can basically uh, shield those uh, that component uh, from the from the elements from the top, but you can also shield shield outside. So even the small amount of, of noise which it generates will be not uh, easily dispersed uh, around. And um, uh, that's uh, these are the basics. Uh, you will receive your uh, your whole complete whole set on the pallet, and you need to take uh, good care when you're unwrapping it from the from the stretch foil. Uh, especially when you are manipulating around the uh, around the walls, so you will not break it. You not uh, you, you should not basically uh, you, you should basically 
take uh, attention when you are when you are dismounting every every hold component which which holds that in place. All right, so we will not have any uh, any issues with uh, with that. Besides that, the whole set is 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 easy is easy to to install. But there is a one condition for for setting up that that component. You need a friend because because every manipulation which you which which you will do with that with that dry cooler or that uh, or that enclosure must be done uh, in the, uh, in the, with the two persons the weight of the enclosure should reach up to 50 kilograms more or less and uh, and uh, that dry cooler is uh, over 80 kilo kilograms when it's dry and we usually test those dry coolers there may, there, there may be some fluid inside so the weight will, will be even higher so uh, as i said uh, what you need to install those uh, those components uh, you need the thread and you need the protective gloves uh, what you need to pay attention to is the uh, is the way you are, you are uh, removing the components from the from the pallets. In regards to the enclosure, it has nice uh, nice uh, external components which you can hold easily. And, you, and, uh, and with two people, 50 kilograms is, is is not not huge huge weight. But uh, in terms of the dry cooler, you need to take great attention to the first of all that that can catch you. That, uh, that's why you, uh, that's why you need the gloves. Secondly, when you are removing all the wrapping and you try to manipulate, you cannot uh, hold with the, any uh, any hydraulic components here. You cannot bend uh, any of the copper tubing because that's 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 quite delicate. And uh, you need to pay uh, pay the attention on the on the every other component which is here to not uh, damage the whole hydraulic installation. Besides that, it's quite easy to to set up. You just need level ground and uh, proper space uh, in the vicinity of 10 meters between the uh, enclosure and dry cooler. Okay. So all I have is a pair of gloves and I have a friend, which will basically help me to dismount every other component. So let's start from removing the enclosure. Right. Please pay attention that inside of the enclosure you will have at least six of the 20 or 25 liter. Uh, mm, Containers, containers with the fluid. Yeah, with the with the engineered coolant. So we you basically need to take it out because that's that's quite heavy. You have some of the components, but but you can you can remove it later. As I said, the enclosure has uh, molding components which you can use later for molding your uh, your uh, um, PSUs or every other component which should be located outside of the of the Okay. Uh, please remember that uh, that you need to choose carefully the place when you uh, when you are uh, when where in which you are installing the the enclosure because once you it's filled with the liquid removing the the coolant from the enclosure. Okay, that's the hard part right now. So we are removing everything. You have a pumping system. You have, you have the cable. Please, uh, please look up for that cable, so it will not so drop or so you will not, not damage it. Then you have the uh, the quite delicate component, which is copper pipe with the heat sensor. So you you need to to take care of that that it does as well. So let's try to carefully remove that from the from the pipe. So we basically wiggling it out of the pallet. All right, you can remove that one. Now we have some some space. You are placing that that dry cooler on the on that foot there. And you need to take attention to detail. That must be leveled out. Okay. So what's inside of the enclosure? Uh, first of all, uh, as mentioned, uh, there will be six or more uh, mm, uh, cabinets with the heat transfer fluid. And besides that, there, there are three components uh, which uh, allow the, the universal enclosure to properly cool the miners. So um, you have two chambers which are divided with, the, with that plate and uh, that plate basically isolates the uh, colder coolant which trans, trans, is transferred from the bottom of the enclosure to the top of the enclosure and then it's uh, 
and then, and then it's removed from the uh, from the uh, through the enclosure to the, to the cooling system. As you can see, that uh, that, that element has the has the opening here, so you can basically wiggle it out and make it higher or lower. It depends on the type of miner you, you, you are using, the height of the miner, so it's quite universal. Besides that, you have the two components. One is the uh, extending tube, which you need to screw to the uh, inlet to the inlet uh, of the uh, of the enclosure. So it's a simple operation. Don't need to pay specific attention to the to detail. Just just screw it so it's so the, the coolant goes uh, to the main chamber. And then you need to need to install the the divider, which goes into the to the folding component. And that's it. Uh, then you have the small uh, small uh, base for the for the miners. So the so the coolant goes below the miners. It, it will not, not. Uh, it, it should be properly dispersed around the, around the mm, enclosure. What is important is that you may find uh, somehow, uh, somehow powerful uh, uh, signs here. But that's not uh, not at all. We basically testing every uh, enclosure, so it remains of the of the testing fluid, and it's it, it's it's not an issue, right? So uh, once you set up your uh, your enclosure, you choose the correct place, which is not far than, than 10 meter of, of from the from the dry cooler. We are able to uh, start filling it with the miners and start uh, start start the operation. Now let's go to the dry cooler and let's find out what is needed to properly connect the enclosure to the dry cooler. So. We have our dry cooler set up properly in the correct place outside of your home or office or any, any place you own and control. And uh, we need to first of all start up and, uh, and properly connect it. So let's start from the description of the components which, which we have here. As you see we have the 20 kilowatts, 25 kilowatts rated dry cooler which will allow you to disperse that amount of heat from your, from your enclosure. Every active component here is installed around of the dry cooler, so you will have no single, literally any noise at uh, at your home, ten meters away, when uh, when you when you have your uh, your miners uh, in operation. Now uh, the dry cooler has two large fans, which are low speed fans, and uh, allow you to work uh, with the temperature up to 35 or over 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have the pump, which allows us to uh, remove the coolant with the speed of 56 liters per, per minute. And we have some, some valves and we have control box. Okay? And uh, when we start the operation, we need to first of all connect those two components, uh, enclosure with the dry cooler, and of course uh, check every, every component here. To, to be safe, to be on the safe side when we are starting the operation. So we have two, uh, we have tubing, which is uh, uh, which is rated for the uh, which, which is rated for uh, for one, up to one hundred degrees Celsius. And uh, when you are uh, setting your tubing, uh, the idea is that you will make a hole in the wall so you can easily roll those the, those two two components with the uh, in the shortest way uh, possible. Uh, you should ma make sure you will not uh, when you are rotting the, the tubing. You should you should take take care to not uh, to not break the, the tubing, to not cut the flow, because uh, and you, and basically you should also uh, make place the tubing out not in the ground. So it would be nice if you will be having that the, the tubing not lying directly in the ground. Uh, but it should be uh, it should be put on some on some uh, on some level or concrete base. Okay, guys. So how to connect those uh, those tubing and how to properly connect the enclosure with the with the dry cooler? First of all, uh, you should mark the tubing. That will make it easy for you uh, because when you will be rotating the tubing from the enclosure to the opening in the wall to the dry cooler, it's easy easy to mix. The good way to uh, to address this is to use the simple chalk or any other or, or, or the material and just mark the, the tubing. One tubing will be 
inlet and the uh, second one will be outlet tubing okay and uh, so if you will mark on both ends of the, of the tubing you will be on the, on, on the safe side okay the, the connection is easy you should not mix it out you should not, mi not, not mix it you can of course uh, but we'll make it easy for you and, and, and try to try to uh, try to help uh, this uh, this valve, this connection, this uh, this um, you know, tubing, that's inlet for the dry cooler. So uh, so uh, this is where the hot coolant goes from the uh, from the enclosure, travels to the to the pump, and goes into the dry cooler when the heat is dispersed to the air. Okay, so that's the inlet. That that that's that's uh, that top one in the dry cooler. That's the, that's that's inlet. This is outlet. This is when your colder, uh, uh, colder coolant goes into the enclosure. Okay. So how to connect the those two those two devices, dry cooler to the enclosure? It's very simple because it's it's a simple matrix to, to think about. Down to down, top to top. You have four uh, four connection points here uh, in the, to to which you need to route your, your tubing. That valve is the inlet valve for the uh, for the dry cooler. So it here travels the hot coolant from the from the enclosure. It travels to the uh, to the pump and then to the dry cooler when the heat is dispersed to the air. The bottom one is the outlet. So it gives you the colder coolant into the enclosure. Okay. With the enclosure, it's exactly the same like with the dry cooler. That's the inlet when the cold or colder uh, uh, coolant goes into the enclosure. It travels to the to the top, goes to the outflow 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 chamber, and then goes out of the enclosure. So that's outlet, inlet, outlet. Okay. So how to connect properly the tubing to the uh, to the um, to the um, hydraulic components? First of all, observe all the components which are here. These are these are protecting the this um, this uh, system from the debris. And secondly, we are testing every one of which of, of, of those uh, of those coolants. So there is a, always some kind of the fluid left. It's it's a little bit greasy, but it's completely harmless. So you just remove it, and, and you are able to to connect. Uh, we have C clamps here, and it's quite easy to to, to connect. You just making some space here, and you are properly connecting that to the to the uh, to the hydraulic components, and you try to locate it around a half centimeter below the the connection point. Then you need to properly secure it with the ten uh, key, and I will use that one for for sake of. Of convenience, and you are connecting it very carefully to the almost to the very end. So it will, it will almost be close to, to each other. Bear with me for quick sake. I will properly connect it. As you can see, it's it's completely. Connected, and you are, and you are basically connecting it to the very end. As you can see here, it it should almost touch. Those two components should be very close. That's fine. Okay. The what you need to to, to pay attention to after you will be uh, you will connect properly the tubing. Please observe the, the, the connection point, which is inlet, which is outlet. Uh, as mentioned, that's inlet to the dry cooler. So this is this is for, this is top one. That's bottom one. So we are connecting that to the top one from the from the enclosure. Then you need to uh, open all uh, shutdown bolts, and you need to do it very carefully. First of all, you need to observe the markings on each of those walls. To know how to how to properly close it or open it, so I see that it go, should should go should go up to open, and you need to 
carefully uh, hold the component or hold the valve and then and then open right just like that and the opening here that you're observing here it's on to that side then you are holding it here observing it it's on especially that the that copper tubing is is, is always uh, you need to always pay attention to, to that, that one to not uh, to not uh, break it and the final one that's on so i will do like this also securing the uh, the wall so let's assume you have we connect everything and i will just right now just connect the electrical cable you have 10 meters of electrical cable which you should connect to the to the uh, electric box at your home where the where the miners are connected it's a good practice to connect that one to the same power outlets to uh, to which you have uh, you connected your miners so it's if if the, something will, will go down then you are you, you're having your miners and your dry cooler shut down and not having the situation when the dry cooler is shut down and the miners are still working right so let's connect it and we're delivering that with the European standard, European electric plug. But yeah, we break it. But for our friends in the US, we have the uh, converters, and you will just 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 use that to convert the the power outlet to your to your dry cooler and every other component. So we have everything connected. Then we are paying attention to the control box. This is IP58-68 uh, box, which uh, which houses the components which uh, control the dry, the way how dry cooler works. Okay, so you know, what you need to do to start the in your dry cooler is to uh, open the the lid, and you have the four circuit breakers. These are two for for each of the fans. This this one is for the pumping system. And that's the main breaker, so you connect it on the on the very end. And after a quick moment, you have your uh, the te te temperature controller uh, started, and you see the ambient temperature of the uh, of the outside of the dry cooler. And the um, you have the the set point of uh, currently of forty degrees. So this is when the when the um, uh, when the uh, dry cooler fans will start to work. Okay. If you have the, if you don't have the uh, the high external temperatures, the fans will not work and will basically save the energy which is uh, which is used to uh, to power the fans. The way you can set set the or change the setup of those of those systems is that you that you just start the set. Then you have, you are in the in the set set mode, and you can easily control the temperature in which dry coolers will will start working. It can be 20 degrees, it can be 40 degrees. Everything depends on the external condition to your you, you work with, you work in. So that's the that's the control box, and you have another switch which is in the in the pump. So after you you, you started your your control box, the last comp the last component which which you need to, to start up is the pumping system. Now. You, there is a switch for the for the pump. You cannot start that switch when the uh, when the system is without coolant, because the the pump will basically eventually after uh, after after some time of, of quite noisy work it will basically break. So this is this is the component which you start at the very end when you fill your enclosure with the with the coolant.